Oh, hi. Now, why can I hear myself? I really should be more technically proficient than this. Okay, all right, there we go. For some reason I could, I got like a massive echo. Oh, through my own ears. All right, so now I'm streaming at 1080. You tell me if it's like considerably blurrier whilst you watch me eat a sugar-free donut that, that like touts that it's healthy. Oh my goodness, I can hear the microphone like cranking just from the crackle of that. I wonder if I've got to turn the gain down. No, that's the gain up. Okay, I've turned the gain down and I'm going to turn the volume of the mic down there as well. Okay, otherwise you're going to hear the, the crunch of the packet of this donut super loud, I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah, it claims, this donut claims to be healthy, but I'm probably 80% sure whatever they put into it, in it to make it taste like sugar is probably way worse. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I want... Do I want to remove the shadows of the power lines on this wall. I kind of don't. Austin, they came to Rogan's club and they got after it. Mm. It was like the night we were like agreeing on <laughs> me signing with Bud Light and they got, they got after it. Yeah. I was surprised. I mean, it's, uh, thank God something was done. Cause I, I was in uh, like central Iowa and I yeah. ordered a Bud Light and dude, it was intense. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll grab a Bud Light. And they're like, you want that rainbow beer? And I was like, what? They're like, here you go. Here's your Bud Light. And everyone's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, fuck you guys. Man. Yeah. They, they held it down. A lot of dudes held it down. Oh, they, they were like, pissed. Walk through you. Yeah. And they're like, where are you guys from? California. And I was like, no. And he's like, well, I'm not going there. <laughs> I was like, well, there you go. I've seen the videos. I'm like, of what? <laughs> I know a video they're talking about yeah, but he course. was like the ones with the Yours. stealing yeah i was <laughs> like did i do that <laughs> yeah, yeah the, uh, a lot the, of bros call flack for still support for supporting but like during the dark times i i held so strong yeah, dude yeah <laughs> held it down i dude. held it down <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah i was like we're gonna be back dude yeah people really overreacted about that shit <laughs> yeah it's like calm and the also down. the thing is is it didn't fuck any of the people that made any of those decisions at bud light it only fucked all the distributors, all these like normal dudes. Yeah. Like middle class, they got fucked. Right. You know? Not yeah. like. I don't know if you saw like Sturgis Bike Week last year. They had like a Bud Light tent that was just like, totally vacant. And all right, <laughs> right next to it's like Coors and Miller. You can't even fucking walk around. I was like, Jesus, guys. Yeah. Go grab a Bud, dude. My dad's on it. My dad's holding strong now. Yeah. For yeah. or against Bud He's Light? He's for. Oh, nice. But now he goes, he lives in Mechanicsburg, so he goes to like shitty bars. Yeah, I love Where like at first there. they like hand you a Bud Light and they're like. Yeah. My dad's just sitting there by himself. Just. If you go to a, if you go to a bar in Mechanicsburg, do you, see, do, do you see Steelers flags and shit? Yeah, there's a lot of Steelers fans. Yeah. Mechanicsburg's a lot of Steelers. Mechanicsburg's split. Say 60, 40 Steelers. There's some Raven heads in there too. Oh, yeah. A lot of Ravens. Why? Because it's close to Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore is the closest. I love that place. Yeah. Baltimore? Yeah. <laughs> Where you're mostly been People going. hate on it, but it's sick. Yeah. There's some good parts. Yeah. Yeah. Fells Point. Like Hamden. Hamden. Yeah. Hamden. <laughs> Two Hamden men. Dude, I was in Boston. Boston's so nice. It's sick. Boston I can't believe how nice, like, the obviously the nice part of Boston is, like, 
But it's, it's easily the nicest northeast city. Even like around Boston is nice too. Like yeah. you just like leave like yeah, out Cambridge of, is nice. Yeah, yeah. Somerville, right. Everett, Fox, Lean. Foxborough. Is that it? That's where the Patriots are. out there. Yeah. yeah. Alright, cool. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> What's your favorite city? My favorite state city. 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 Right here in Austin, Texas, bro. It's pretty it really? nice. It's actually pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. Like, Austin's pretty fucking yeah. good. Every time I go somewhere else, I'm like, I can't wait get, to get back can't to wait Austin. To get home, yeah. dude. Get back to that nice long day. <laughs> uh, Nashville's fun. Yeah. Nashville's. You guys ever been to Yuma, Arizona? No. It's nice. I have. I was out there. I was staying at Bismarck, Arizona. Mm. That's not too far. Wild West Town. Yeah. Is Yuma, is that after the movie, 310? The movie's or? after. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's technically the hottest city in the U.S. It's like 128 in the summer. God damn. <laughs> I yeah. can't, I can't go to any like really hot places. Like I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a complete puddle this summer. Mm. But like, <laughs> I can't you really... need to start doing Pookie and Jet videos, <laughs> <laughs> where I get to fucking dress you up. I go, Pookie looks absolutely stunning today. He's wearing swim trunks and a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Pookie looks amazing tonight. <laughs> He's got on these Skechers, <laughs> Skechers from Target. <laughs> yeah, these shoes awesome. are sick, man. Thanks. I just got these. I off didn't the know internet. you had shoe swag. Uh, are they? I, <laughs> yes, I, yeah. bro. What the hell? Yes. Yeah, like a graffiti man. writer from Australia with those. Yeah. <laughs> Draw a fucking swastika. <laughs> Put a fucking spray paint of swastika on this fucking a- Aborigines house. <laughs> <laughs> that type of graffiti or what type of graffiti? Uh, yeah, that type of graffiti. Talking about a guy outside of LeBron James' house that one time? <laughs> Wait, what happened to LeBron James' house? I don't house? know. I, yeah, I, think, I, I think it was a false flag, dude. Uh, okay. He tried to get uh, I think that Wallace. One, I think that one was a false flag. What was the, the NASCAR guy? That was NASCAR a false flag. NASCAR was a false flag. Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace, oh, yeah. yeah. It was a false flag. That destroyed Talladega race weekend for a lot of people. It did. Shit, back when I used to go to Talladega, like it was way more rowdy. Yeah. Now that kind of polarized the community. Are you a raceman? Uh, <laughs> do, you like, <laughs> do you like races? I like the people at the races. For yeah, sure. it's funny. I like to be in the lot across the street where all the camper vans are at. Yeah, shit. okay. Speaking of false flag graffiti, do you guys remember that white guy from Ohio who like said that he was being targeted by like anti-white vandals? And he spray painted his own house with like Crips rule and shit. <laughs> You guys got to look this up. Holy shit, that's so funny. I'm going to go talk to him. Because he still stands strong. He's like, no, they did this. They did it. I love when dudes stand strong after. Is there like proof of him actually doing it? Or is no, it- but it's like he lives in the middle of the suburbs and like oh. it's like it's like blacks rule, Crips rock, like all this crazy <laughs> shit. You know what Bad I mean? It's like people rule. Whitey sucks, all this shit. And he's like, they're coming after me now. It's like, I don't think they are. They actually might. If I was a kid, I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's one white guy in the neighborhood, yeah. that's a black kid. And yeah. This is I'd go do that. <laughs> I'd throw rocks in his house. Yeah. Not if it was the other way around. But <laughs> yes, in that scenario, yes. Yeah, you're a little black kid. And, if uh, I was a little black kid and there was one white house, yeah, yeah, I'd be all over at that. it. I'd be all over <laughs> that fucking house. Yeah, burn a cross on his lawn. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, my favorite holding it down was the the translator, the guy who got on stage with Obama in South Africa. It was a it was a thing for Nelson Mandela, and the guy pretended he was a translator and just stood on stage. Directly next to Barack Obama, just like <laughs> he didn't speak sign language. He had no idea. He had oh, never done. Shit. Turns out <laughs> they go to his house to interview him, and he was like, "I'm fucking schizophrenic." <laughs> like I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, I got out of a mental hospital and went straight there. <laughs> Wait, so nobody even hired him? No. He Holy just shit. Showed up and was like, I'm the interpreter. You can do that. People. Okay, first off, Howling Wolf. Coolest name ever. But yeah, I can do that. Um, I'll just finish this generative fill off bear with me and then I will pull a photo up I actually don't know if there's anything from this project that desperately needs a blend oh actually I think there's one photo that needs a good that needs a good blend all right bear with me this one here 
I'll just do like a really quick run through of it. Uh, so I'll find the photo that I'm blending it with. These are almost the more the most like important steps is uh, is the preparing the file first. Um, so this is the shot that I'm gonna blend in. And what I want to do is with the shot that I'm going to blend in for the view, like the underexposed shot, I'm going to try and make it look as close as humanly possible to what the final result might look like. And then that will make the blend a lot smoother. It's going to look ridiculous. Um, but it's like an exercise in just making those transitional areas play a little bit nicer. There we go. Okay, the outside's looking a little bit funky. Everything's looking a little bit funky, but we're going to make it work. We are going to make it work. All right, this is just going to be like a demo of how I might approach it. Um, <clears throat> not necessarily the final result, because I'll still do like a really quick edit of this. So I'm just going to open those two shots as layers in Photoshop. It's going to behave exceptionally slow whilst I've got Lightroom open, Photoshop open, a whole other 50 megapixel file uh, open at the same time. And I'm streaming this, encoding it, so it's probably going to struggle a little bit. All right, so I've got the two files uh, here and so that's going to be the base right there and then we're going to blend that view into it so in Lumenzia I might as well just do the pre-blend because um, it'll just do the aligning it'll align the photos and then it obviously chucks a mask in there now I've been using Lumenzia for a while so I reckon my guess is that just using the just using the, uh, whatever you call this, it'd be L1 or like essentially all of the lights. Um, and I'm just gonna turn that into a selection. So now I've got that selection. I've got L1 selected or all of the lights selected. And then I'm gonna use a brush, like no hardness. So it's soft as shit. Uh, and then I've got 20% opacity, 20% flow. I might just send it to 10% flow and then I'm just going to gently, gently brush this in. And probably from your perspective, from anyone watching, the incremental change is going to be absurdly, obscenely slow and indistinguishable. It's probably going to be challenging to even notice that I'm bringing detail back at all whatsoever but I'm just going to slowly finesse that oh I have noticed the, the floor like the concrete floor is pretty blown out so I'm going to just bring that back in just a little bit and yeah I'm just gently gently slowly bringing that detail back in sort of focusing in primarily on the bits that are particularly hot but that's looking pretty good okay so that's without it that's with it I like having the histogram up here because let's say if I wanted to achieve the most natural possible, 
I actually, I really do want the hottest parts of the photos, like the highest, brightest part of the hints Instagram to butt right up against the edge of the histogram um, while still remaining detail. So this is the mask that I've painted in. I'm going to turn that into a selection. So I'm going to control click the mask and then that's made that into a selection. And then in Lumenzia, I'm going to use the contrast button action thing. And then that will bring back some of the lost contrast from the blend. I'm going to select the contrast layer and the blended layer and then make that into a group. And I'm going to bring the opacity right down to zero. And then watching up here top right in the histogram, as I bring the opacity up, it's probably really hard here actually what I can do. Check this out. Oh, check this out. That's cool. All right. So if you, ooh, wrong one. If you see the opacity, opacity here of the, of the contrast and blended layer, and then watching the histogram up here, the goal of the exercise is to like slowly bring the opacity up of that group until I can kind of see, you can kind of tell that there's still detail in there, but it's still super bright, super hot, um, which is what you want because the sun's out there over the water. So you do want it to look like supernatural, supernatural, not like supernatural, like fake, super dot, 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 natural. So if I take it out, overexposed, bring it back in, it's just enough detail for it to look authentic. And then I'd probably, like there's no blue in there, so I might use one of these masks to, maybe with selective color, and then add some cyan, take the yellow out, maybe, maybe a photo filter with cooling that one like a really low opacity just so it sort of blues up things but that will add blue to the clouds which isn't necessarily ideal so yeah but that's essentially the main like the main i guess pillars of a blend for me would be having that base uh, having a base layer that's got a overexposed blown out bit then having the layer that you're going to blend in and then I just use the light selections in that one I probably could have used a more refined uh, luminosity mask yeah but I think the things that people neglect or them I think I'm, I'm sure 90% of what I just explained then you you would have understood to some degree the things that people neglect is like once you've got that mask that you've blend in it never hurts to then make a selection from that mask control click the mask and then contrast in Lumenzia you could do that manually as well but yeah make a contrast layer to sort of correct for like any dullness in the blend and then make a group out of all of that and and I think this probably this last step is the, the one that people never fuck around with and maybe they're better at painting it in than me so they don't have to is then yeah lowering the opacity of that blend as low as you possibly can while retaining the detail because <clears throat> you don't want the exposure outside to be identical to inside and there to be sort of like no delineation between the two. Yeah. Um, I think it's Mike Kelly who says like, if you've got, if you incorporate the sun into the photo, if the sun is in the photo, it should be blown out. Um, and if something's black, like if something 
is in the most shadowy part of the, the photo, it should be black in the histogram. Because um, technically even that's how our eyes see things as well. You. Yeah. Right, let me get this screen back to where it should be. About there. Put that there. There's a whole thing of people getting in trouble for being a fake interpreter. Just showing up. Well, and, and yeah. sometimes they're very serious. Sometimes it's like a missing woman, or like they found the body of a child or something. And there's somebody at the police press conference next to it, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, just up there. <laughs> yeah, the peekaboo murder case. <laughs> peekaboo murder. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so you're sticking around tonight i think so man i'm down damn Should those we? bud lights look nice on you those hey kids. yeah by the way this guy gifted me these sick ass bud light air force ones <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they keep sending me bud light air force ones <laughs> <laughs> I, can't I refuse to wear them they're very nice i'm gonna wear they're this so shit every nice. day for the next month yeah <laughs> like you know who got me these yeah. <laughs> check out <this>. post malone <laughs> um they are fresh, dude. But yeah, we should be good. That's about time. Um, dude, thanks a lot. Oh, fuck yeah, Is there yeah, anything man. you want to talk about? <laughs> no. <laughs> anything you want to promote or anything? Oh, oh. shit, no. Okay, cool. <laughs> I just wanted right. to hang out and shit. Right. Cool, 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 cool. Should we Let's promote anything? No. No, 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 no. You're more than welcome to. Just r follow rule number one. Hell have, yeah. Have fun. Panties in my podcast. We lose it. Say it with your chest. I said it. Pa panties in my podcast. Go ahead. Give her a listen. Yeah, listen to it. Thank you. We miss you, Matthew. Today's topic um, seems that uh
um, our, our friend um, Walter Weeks, Mr. Fresh Prince CEO. Got his uh, worker pregnant, and she's keeping the baby, and she's exposing him. <laughs> yes. No, sir. Alpha male guru, whatever, red pill, knows the truth of the world, uh, got caught up uh, with a sex worker, and got her pregnant. And now he's begging her to get her to get rid of it. The guys we were supposed to tell you uh, not to get these um, whores pregnant got a whore pregnant. Now, can I ask you a question? Is that fresh? I'm just asking. Is that a new one? God or is it this the most stale-ass mistake you can make in the world? God damn it. You know what they calling him online? Pug CEO. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> they, they got a nickname called Pug CEO. Yeah, they are killing this man. All right, so the, her name is Daisy Fit. Okay, she, she is... She's putting them on blast. You mean to tell me that Fresh fucked with Fit? No, 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 no. That's fire. I didn't see that one. Fresh, fresh got Fit pregnant. <laughs> I'm just saying. But you didn't see that shit when you said it? Because like, because that's the thing. Fresh offers pretty much nothing to the podcast. So it's almost like Fit got him pregnant and got to pay child support. If I've seen any girl's Instagram and it has preach in it, I will never talk to her. It could be the baddest. Say that again? It could be the second coming of Megan Good. If she got preach in the Instagram, you better get the fuck away from me. Ain't no way I'm getting no Megan preach good pregnant. That's gay. Damn, she, yo, 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 she could be the whole incarnate of Halle Berry. Halle Berry? Halle Berry. Halle yeah, Berry. It, it, it could be Halle Berry. And if her middle name's Preach, bitch, you gotta go. Halle Preach Berry? No, oh, she gotta go. You're not clapping. No. You're not clapping uh, Halle Preach Berry's cheek. Nah, 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 nah. Be buying flights and shit and seeing that middle name on the passport. You, you don't want that? Here, bro. No? Nah, nah, nah. Nah. Halle Preach Berry. Nah, nah, no. Talk. It really would be Abba and Priest. <laughs> <laughs> you man! That's disgusting. You didn't see him recently? He was talking about Habib Hijab, and he was like... The thing is, if you don't believe in the laws of logic, and, for example, non-contradiction, or, for example, 2 plus 2 equals 4, if you don't believe in any of that, then you can't have a conversation with anyone about anything because there's no common ground. But, you can never find out what truth is. Okay, so... Yeah. Creation itself... Who decided 2 plus 2 plus 4? Man did, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, on a basis, 2 plus 2, who decided that? Who decided 2 plus 2 equals 4? Is that a serious question? Yeah, what no, do you expect? I'm, like, I'm ask, is, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking you. No one decided 2 plus 2 equals so 4. How bro. did it come about? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 
<laughs> that shit was funny, right? <laughs> well, who decided? You know what? There's nobody who can stump you like a stupid person. All right, so uh, Miss Fit, the one that fresh was fucking, she writes, she sends a picture of the pregnancy test. She took two of them because she needed to confirm that she had pug CEO's babies. You always told me you wanted to be your baby's. You wanted me to be your baby and mother. M mother, okay. I loved you and I did everything to be a good girlfriend. Now this is happening. You walked away. I think I want to keep the baby. I don't want to kill alive. I want you to think carefully and take the responsibility. I'll call you shortly. Take your time. And then he says, I can't have kids. And she says, take responsibility for your actions. She goes, and he goes, what's this? She goes, read it. Blood test. Pregnancy blood test. So she got all the tests to make sure she knew. I know, but what does it mean? I don't understand the numbers. Because two plus two equals four. <laughs> <laughs> and then she highlights it on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> it just says pregnant and he says Debatable. it's not about that right now it's good it's not good and a lot is happening especially now business may be over i don't want kids right now and we spoke about it and you agreed and she goes i never agreed i agreed based on your actions are you not educated if you keep come inside me i will get pregnant i don't get pregnant without your behave words mean nothing man up I'm not saying because I want to be with you, because I don't, because you are nothing to me, but the baby is innocent. What are you saying? We're not together and won't be. Why would that be good for the kid? So she goes, why did you keep coming inside me? <laughs> hey, listen, lady, why did you let this man? All those things happen, and yes, feelings change, but bringing a kid into this world without parents' love is cruel. We both thought you wouldn't get pregnant. Okay, aside from two plus two being four, coming inside of woman means very possible to get her pregnant. <laughs> and who decided? Who decided that coming inside girl mean per baby? Who decided? Uh, the elders that came together. <laughs> Sper yeah. Sperm inside uh, uh, ovulation, baby. Who decided? Who 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 decided? Listen. That being said. <laughs> And he goes, also, now I'm worried. I have to test the other girls, at least four. And then... What the fuck did you say? That's what he wrote. I didn't, I didn't make that up. And she says, another girl, four girls. You are saying you have sex with four girls without protection? I hope you have all the money for your children. Wait, wait, that's what he said. Yeah, that's what he said. Hmm. He said, I have to get tests for the other girls. All four of them. And he goes, I don't have money. Good luck. <laughs> you will see. Unfortunately, Fresh, that's not how it works. She filed them court documents. They're going to get your bank accounts. They're going to get your statements. And you're going to have to cough up that cash. This ain't something that you can walk your way out of. You better pray to high heaven because you're going to be on the hook for a lot. This is a story between me and Walter Weeks, podcaster known as Pug CEO. Wow. I met him on November 21st in Miami. I fall in love with him. Okay, this girl writes like an immigrant. We spend New Year's like a what? Like an immigrant. <laughs> no, that I'm accurate. We spend New Year's together, and that's the time when he asked me to be his girl and to commit to him. And he posted a video of us on social media. He said to me, "I love you. I don't want you to be with other men." <laughs> a few days later, he asked me to meet his mom. Everything went well. I showed him and his mom my respect. He defended me on his podcast from the rumors. That's the moment I truly fall in love with him. But this is where the game begins. I left Miami on January 8th. So that's like, okay, that's not even like a month and a half. Traveled back to China for Chinese New Year. The night before, we had a serious conversation. He said he sees me like someone to spend the whole life with. And I told him I was going to move to Miami for him. From then, we started a long-distance relationship for two months until I traveled to Barbados. I met his entire family there. Everything was so real, he's serious with me. Therefore, I'm not on birth control, and we had sexual behavior without protection. At first, everything was fine. I stayed in his apartment. We had a mutual understanding. He's not a monogamous person. That me and him both need... Both needs our own space. So I suggested him to help me rent an apartment. I want you to have the things you want as you understand me. 
Ten days later, a morning after we had lunch with his sister, he broke his promises. After a few days, he asked me to move out. He stopped coming home. He disappeared for three nights without explanation. I left my work behind in China to pursue this relationship. So I moved out, booked a flight to New York City. On March 30th, I had a pregnancy test, and it's positive. She's not a U.S. citizen? Uh, he's telling her to take a pill to get rid of the kid. Okay. Oh, there's audio. So the title of this is called Ling Ling Leaks Phone Call with... God damn. <laughs> Yo, the people on Reddit are just saying, yo, wow. They do not give up. What? I want the baby because I, I don't want to kill the baby. I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want to. You're not. They just give you a pill and then it's over. No, but that's what I'm saying. The pill, they just give it to you from a doctor and then you're good. <laughs> okay. Mm. I'm gonna, this is joking aside, okay? This is just for everyone watching at home. Abortion shouldn't be something you guys take lightly, okay? Abortion should not be some form of birth control that you guys heavily rely on, all right? A lot of you guys are just busting inside of people, no birth control, they're not on birth control, don't care. And then when shit hit the fan, you're just looking at the ladies like, yo, take a pill, go to the clinic. Like that's an incredibly physically traumatic thing for a lot of women to experience. It fucks up their hormone balance for an extended period of time, it has physical ramifications, and it messes with their psyche. If you've never had your hormones completely out of whack, you may never be able to understand. But just casually saying, yo, just take a pill, do this, just get rid of it. You guys are asking a lot, <clears throat> okay? So I'm not saying that you guys can't have conversations about abortion, but the way some of you guys approach it and the way you guys talk about it so flippantly, Y'all are so goddamn irresponsible about it. I don't even care if you guys get caught up having to pay child support. Y'all should be a bit more considerate of what you're asking the opposite sex to do in regards to their own body when it comes to abortion. Well, they not be never lived it. They, it, 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 it it's, it's, it's one thing not living it, but you can at least put yourself in the shoes of a person. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, they haven't lived it. They, they will never live it. They no. will never understand how no. traumatic and crazy that is and, and what you put yourself... But... I mean, I wouldn't expect someone not understanding two plus two equals four to understand that, but you have to understand what it what it what it brings a person. Like, just even not the pill is crazy. Like, you have to force and induce. Basically, it's not just it magically disappears. No, no, you have to induce your body into a contraction to expel the thing. You know what I mean? So, mm, for your body and to induce your body to do that, the chemicals that you have to. My understanding is even after it happens for a long extended period of time after that, they still feel the effects of a pregnancy. That's correct. So like their bodies are kind of going through it the entire time. Mm -hmm. So, and if you've never seen a woman who's pregnant, like she going through mood strings, her hormones are all over the place, her appetite, her depression, her, her like everything changes. So just guys understand what it is you guys are asking for that little short bit of like pleasure that you guys get busted inside the sugar walls. You guys are demanding that they take this thing and there's like very little consideration for it when you guys have this conversation. I understand being caught up with the child and it being brought up in unfair circumstances and child support, all that shit's crazy. But a lot of y'all not even taking that shit into consideration when you bust it inside of these broads and then you just say this shit within the afterwards. It just doesn't sit right with me. I think it's a bad way to approach it. And I also think if you want her to actually get the abortion, it's probably best not to just go nuclear and be like, because then she's going to just cut you off. Just something to think about. What do you mean? Because if you're just like, yo, fuck you, then she'd be like, fuck y'all, do what I want. And then what happens? You can't even have any say. And me listening to this bro too, like, she's an idiot as well. well how so? Well, this guy puts his whole life out there. She gets with Okay, expecting him to take responsibility of all this other stuff. The dude is constantly in different dumb situations. What's more, he's told her, I'm going to be sleeping with other people. He does it with you unprotected. Why wouldn't you think he's not going to do it with the other ladies unprotected? Sure. I don't know. To me, it's just like you met him November 21st. You guys are talking about having babies by January. Like, this broad is stupid. Two months, you having babies? Or with a dude who's sleeping with a bunch of other women? Or smart. Or she knows exactly what she's doing. Baby trapping? I'm, I'm not, I don't want to put it out there, but it's either two things. Whenever I see a, a, a thing, when I see a situation like that, I see that it's either really stupid or someone thought about this whole thing. No, I know. So, like, how are you going to deal with this? By, by saying, I don't want a baby? That's all? I mean... She goes to the doctor, I guess.
to the doctor. This is what I think is thought out. When do you go from I really love them to record all the conversation to trap them out and to, to, to put it out there? That's why I think it's kind of weird because they're having a the conversation now. Go ahead. It don't take that much. Like if you really love somebody or you're like you're really crazy about them and especially if you got the crazy hormones going on inside you because mm. you're pregnant. Two, three months is all it takes for you to be like, this person abandoned me. They're talking crazy about me online. Yo, I'm about to expose everything. Hey, hey, listen, if you feeling cornered and isolated, it don't take much for you to get online and talk crazy. I'm going to air this shit out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's not that crazy. That's not that crazy at all. I am mad about it. I have seen that happen way faster than three months. Sure. (laughs) I <laughs> see that. Sure. Hey, the, the the switch from I love you to like, I'm going to put your whole shit on blast is not that far for a lot of people. Yeah, go from uh, I love you to I'm going to bust the windows out your car. But also, someone saying I love you in two months, I don't believe them at all. I think these are just people who are a little bit unstable and a little bit cuckoo, and then they just the love, love bomb like crazy and say bomb. crazy stuff. Yeah, the love bomb.